Thank you very much for attending this uh, presentation. My name is uh, Ivan Lopez. I work as software engineer at SUSE in the system management team, typically known as the JAST team. Here you have some contact info, uh, some information contact in case you want to reach me. And I'm here today for telling you about the new project we are developing in our team, the so-called Dingstaller. So let's start with some introduction. Um, well, the first thing we would like to make very clear is that this new project is not a replacement for Just. Just will continue being there in the products that is now, for example, in SLE 15 and also in the future service packs of SLE 15, also in the current version of OpenSUSE Leap. We don't know about the future for both, for SUSE and OpenSUSE, but at least for the current versions, JAS will continue there. Uh, well, for the new project, well, last year, more or less in summer, we started to have some discussions in our team about how the installer should look in the near future. And we had some ideas in mind. For example, we wanted to reduce the number of steps you have to perform with the JAS installer. Probably you have used the JAS installer once in your life, and well, you have to follow a wizard approach, sometimes too many steps to perform the installation. So we did some experiments modifying the JAS installer, basically by ending at the end of the installer with the last uh, dialog with the installation settings and screen with some default proposals and al allowing you to uh, to touch the settings directly there in the in the in that dialog without going uh, through the whole wizard we were also uh, experimented with the idea of a web interface for the installer we also were playing with different tools and ideas and then in more or less in January, well, in December, we started to work more seriously in a new project, in the, in the Dinstaller project. And in December, in January, we already had the first prototype for, for this project. This is the, how the, the UI of the, uh, the new installer uh, currently looks, but okay, we will see more about it in a while with a, de with a demo. Uh, also in January, we published our first blog post telling about the idea of the new project. And in general, well, it was uh, quite well received by the community, but it's true that there is always a common complaint, and it's about the name. Uh, yeah, uh, we totally agree because uh, the installer sounds um, right the opposite of installing a system. We are aware of that, and sooner than later, we are going to propose a new, a better name for, for the project. Anyway, we are open to suggestions. So if you have any proposal, please give it back to us. We will be very grateful. Uh, well, and just out of curiosity, also in January, only one week before we published our first blog post, we realized that the Anaconda team in Red Hat is doing something very similar to us. They are also implementing a, a web user interface over Anaconda using a uh, installer service, uh, sorry, sorry, a DFAST service for communicating uh, with, with, the, with the system. So from an architectural point of view, both ideas are basically the same. Of course, each project has its own requirements and use cases, but, uh, but the, the idea is the same. Uh, yeah, it was a great coincidence that two different groups of people at different parts of the world started to do more or less the same at the same time. Uh, okay, so let's now talk a bit about the motivation and, and the scope of this project. So our main motivation for creating this project for, uh, was to offering a modern solution for the installer modern from both sides, from the UI point of view and also from the architectural point of view. And at the same time, we wanted to overcome some of the problems we have been addressing with JAS during all these years. As you probably know, JAS has been there for more than 20 years. And Linux systems have changed quite a lot during that time. But JAS is still able to manage a wide range of uh, Linux systems from very ancient versions of SLE to OpenSUSE open Tambacbit, for example. That means that the code of JAST 
contains a lot of logic, contains a lot of, uh, is able to manage a lot of use cases, sometimes even kind of contradictory use cases. It's normal when you start to work, uh, to, to work in, in, in a just model, you start to, to read the code, and you discover new use cases meanwhile you are reading the code. Of course, use cases that, that are not documented at all. All this makes very difficult to evolve the just code and to maintain the code. So in general, we can say that the, 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 just, the just code has too much technical depth. And it's not only a problem about the amount of use cases, it's also a problem about the complexity because some part of JS are complex even for us that work every day with that code. Okay, another problem we want yeah, to, to solve with this new project is the limitations we have with the user interface of JAST. The JAST interface is limited and it also looks outdated. Just for, for the UI, uses a library, the leaf UI UI library. That library is yeah, developed uh, by the community, it's an open source uh, project. Uh, it belongs to the open uh, open source community, and um, yeah, the, is, this library has been a key part of Just because it allows you to write the UI uh, code once and then render it with different technologies. For example, with Qt, with uh, N courses, or even with GTK. This is great, but it also some, have some drawbacks. For example, the UI design is always limited by the more restrictive technology, in this case by uh, N courses. Um, a part of that also the amount, uh, the, the set of widgets is also limited and so on. So all that make very difficult to create modern and advanced UIs within Just. Then another, well, not everything is bad in Just. In the four or five years, we have put a lot of effort on improving some key modules of Just. For example, we have rewritten from the scratch the Just storage module. We have improved a lot Just network, some part of Just users, only for mentioning some of them. And, well, and it would be great to reuse all that effort in other projects. I'm thinking, for example, using some tool like Salt, for example, and delegating to just the curation, for example, the partitions, or the, config the configuration of the bootloader, or, or that kind of things. Right now, it's possible to do that, but yeah, if you want to reuse some part of just, most likely you have to carry with all the just dependencies, sometimes even graphical uh, dependencies. So that is another motivation to improve the reusability of, of all the four we have been done in, in Just. And last but not least, we also want to make contributions easier. We know that contributing to Just is not an easy task. Maybe because we lack of good documentation, maybe because the complexity of the, of the Just code, or even because it's difficult to find uh, people uh, knowing the specific technologies that we use in Just, for example, Leaf YUI. So that's something we have in mind to also improve the contributions in the new project. Then, about the scope of the project, well, to be honest, we don't know yet what specific use cases and products we are going to support with this new installer. At this moment, we are taking part of some um, ALP workgroups. ALP is the adaptable Linux platform we are developing in SUSE. If you don't know about it, I highly recommend to watch some record recordings from yesterday. And uh, well, as I was saying, we are taking part of uh, some workgroups. We are discussing ideas. We are trying to collect uh, use cases, requirements, etc. And um, yeah, our goal is to use this new project for ALP, for both for the local, also for the remote installation of bare metal systems. But let's see. We are still trying to, yeah, to find the specific use cases yeah, we need to implement. Um, yeah, so now we are going to really see a demo. 
Uh, well, in case you in case you you want to to try the, this new installer, you can download the live ISO image that we have we have prepared in in OBS. So if you go to the just head project in OBS, there is a thin installer sub project, and you can download the ISO image from there. So, okay, now I'm going to switch to the demo. No, before switching to the demo, well, I have to comment something. When you run the, the ISO uh, image, uh, well, first of all, I, if you are going to try it, I, we strongly recommend to use a virtual machine because you know this is an experimental project. Um, well, seed sometimes happens. Uh, well, but in case you do it, the first things the, the, the installer does when you when you run it is, uh, yeah, is the so-called probing phase. During this phase, the installer tries to yeah, to analyze your system, your storage card, uh, uh, network cards, uh, storage devices, etc. And in case it needs some information for you, for example, if you have uh, encrypted partitions, for example, it asks you for the encryption password in case you you want to to open your your devices before performing the installation. For the demo, I have omitted the, this 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 proving phase because it takes some some time. So now, oh, okay, I have lost my. Okay, for some reason the yeah the virtual machine was closed and I have to open it again. Okay, so yeah. Okay. So Okay, so here on the right we have the yeah, the the main dialog of the of the install the new installer. You have probably noticed that is quite inspired by the installation settings summary of Just. The idea is basically the same. You have everything here here in one page with some default proposals, and you can well, touch the the settings that you want. The first thing uh, you you can modify is the the language for for the target system. For now, this only affects to the display language. The keyword is always in English in the in the in the target system. This is something we will improve. Then the next option is for selecting the product to install. Again, here for this de demo, we have only the tumbleweed, but it theore theoretically is also possible to install different versions of OpenSUSE Leap with the current state of, of the project. Then we have a section for selecting the target disk in which you want to perform the installation. And below you have the Actions that are going to be performed on, on, on the selected disk. Here you can expand also the the sub volume actions. And then the last section is well about config configuring users. You can create the first user for your system. For it, you can indicate the full name, the username, the password, and the out and the auto login setting. And then we have a couple of settings for root, one for uh, the root password and other for the SSH public key. Mm, well, this is basically all that is possible now with the yeah, with the with the UI. Maybe in the in the future we will add more options, but not that many because the idea is to keep the installer as minimal as possible. And then configure the rest in one, once the system is already installed. For, for example, in the first boot, maybe using other other tool or whatever. 
Apart of all, all of all of that, uh, the installer right now also allows to yeah, some kind of custom configuration with a YAML file. It's also limited at this uh, limited at this point. It only al allows you to indicate the repositories to use for the installation and the SSL certificate in case you want to perform a remote installation. And again, for the future, we plan to extend the possibilities of the, of, for the configuration of the installer. For example, it would be possible to indicate the partitions you want to create in the, in the target system, or the sub-volumes, or the, your network configuration, etc. Okay, so if you click on install, you get this confirmation pop-up. If you accept the, install, the installation, simply start. I'm not going to do it because it takes some time. Um, yeah, but basically, if you perform the installation, you uh, get. Oh, shit. What is now the presentation slides? Yeah, you get this. Uh, yeah, this uh, this dialog telling you that the, everything was installed, and you have a button for rebooting into a recent, recently installed system. And a part of the um, of the UI, we also have oh, what is happening here. Okay, a part of the yeah of the of this UI, we also have implemented a command line interface for for the for the installer. We have the, the installer CTL command, and it basically allows you to do the very same. And then the the UI, you can configure the language, the target disk, and everything with the with the command line. And one interesting thing is that everything you configure the, with the command line is automatically reflecting the UI. For example, I'm going to select uh, another device for 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 the installation. Sorry. If you have a look to the right, now the target disk is BDA, BDA, and I'm going to select BDD. And as you see, the UI was automatically reflected. And this is because we are using DBAS, and uh, well, our UI is continuously listening to device and is able to automatically react to the events that are happening there. Okay, I think that's all about the demo, so let's continue with the rest of the presentation. So about, let's now talk a bit about the technical details, how all, all this is, is done. So the key part of this project is a service. We have created a installer service. This service takes care of uh, yeah, uh, configuring the installation or, and performing the installation in, in the system. One thing that maybe surprises you is that this service is actually using just libraries under the hood. As I was commented previously, during the last year, we have put a lot of effort in improving the JAS code, and now we are taking use of, of, that, of that work here in this project. We are not starting from scratch. So we have the installer service that is providing a DBAS API, and then over that uh, DBAS API, we have created a web client. The web client is developed basically as a cockpit module. So we are all, we are also using all the copy infrastructure for communicating with the bus, for logging to the system, etc. And for the UI itself, we are using Patternfly. Patternfly is the component system developed by by Red Hat, and it's basically the library that, that all the copy modules uses uh, for the UI. And we are yet another copy module, and we are using basically the same technologies as the rest. Okay, this now is well, another representation of the architecture. So we have the, the installer services using just libraries and providing a DBAS API. And then over it, we have the web uh, the web interface. One advantage of this uh, architecture is that we can easily create 
other kind of, of interfaces over other kind of clients over the device. For example, the command line interface, as, as we have uh, seen in, in previously in the demo, or maybe we can create a Qt application or whatever you want. Actually, uh, this representation is not totally true because right now we are splitting our deinstaller service into smaller services. The idea is to have one specific service, for example, to managing uh, the storage devices, another service for managing network, and so on, because that approach gives some advantages. For example, uh, you can perform the proving of the system in parallel, or even you it opened the door to create more asynchronous user interfaces. So at the end, we are improving the, yeah, the user experience. Um, last but not least, also splitting the services allows you to create services that totally independently one from the other. For example, you can use a uh, specific uh, programming language for one service and another different language for other service. The only important thing here is the DBAS API you are providing. Okay, so now about the future of the project. Well, as I was commenting previously, we don't know yet exactly what products and use cases we are going to support, but still we have in mind some things that we uh, would like to continue doing. And one of them is to implement the unattended remote installation and also the integration with Suma. Something similar to AutoJazz. Of course, we are not going to backport all the AutoJazz use cases. This is a new project with new requirements. But we would like to do something similar to, yeah, to AutoJazz. Then we also want to, yeah, to invest some quite work in make possible to deploy images. We know that ALP is going to be based on images. Uh, okay, we, we would like to support that, to yeah, support the installation based on images. Another thing we would like to work on is on the integration of the, the this uh, product with uh, third party tools, for example, with uh, SAL or uns SALT or Ansible and much, much more things. For example, from the UI point, point of view, there are still too many things uh, to do. For example, we need uh, a mechanism for reporting errors to the user. We need yeah, to make uh, more asynchronous actions in the UI, etc. There are a lot of things to do yet. OK, so now let's conclude this presentation with uh, some highlights. So. Today, we have presented uh, a new project, a uh, new project that is based on a modern architecture, based on DBAS, and uh, also uh, with a web, uh, with a user interface based on web technologies. Our goal is to make this new project to, yeah, to devote with, with ALP, maybe in the future also for similar systems and based on image deployments. And Everything is still in a very, very early stage. There are too many things to decide and to discuss. And of course, we need feedback. We would like to hear from you. So please, if you have any suggestion, any idea, whatever, you can contact us in the, in the common, cha common channels on IRC, in the mailing list, or even you can uh, create an issue in our GitHub project, the installer project that you can find under the JAS organization. So I think that's all I wanted to, to tell you. So thank you very much for your attention.